color theory, wrong. Art, education, wrong, useless. Light and shadow, it's bullcrap. None of it is real. You know what it is, though? It's propaganda from big art. Or is it? It isn't. It's not propaganda. It depends who you ask. I'm not going to get into the whole yada 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 about it. This video isn't about like, you know, art school isn't valid, Baroque art, I could do that in my sleep. It's, we're not talking about that. This is just me and my personal opinion that I don't think the most important thing is going to school. You could learn how to draw sitting at home on your computer. You would look at videos, this and that, if that's what you wanna do. Or you could learn to draw in the way that I did, which was trickery and deceit. Much like beauty, art is in the eye of the beholder. It depends what you want it to be and what you want to do. I think it is valid to say that you have to know the rules to bend them. A lot of people think like you can do a blind contour drawing and it's going to look good because it's like intentionally messy, but you know, it's actually not as easy as it seems. You know, I hate to say it, but you got to know how to draw good in order to draw good. And that's what this video is about. So you may be asking at this point, well, what is it? What's the secret? It's all about what's going on in your head. You must be confident in yourself. I feel like the only reason really that I'm good at drawing is because I was so blinded by this God complex that I had that I just simply like, there was no reality where I wasn't drawing and like eventually becoming good. I hope that everyone could see that I really do like my art. I am the realest man out there of my own self. I say it like it is. I know when something's good, I know when something's bad. You gotta be confident. You gotta know yourself, right? And also, this is super important, don't compare yourself to others. That's the second worst thing you could do. Oh, I can't draw, you know, as good as James Jean. I've been drawing for two years and I'm not as good as James Jean. I can't even draw a stick figure. Shut your mouth. Shut your stinky mouth. Neither can I. And that's okay, I'm not James Jean. And I never will be and neither will you. But you know what you are? Yourself. And that's good in a completely different way. And this is the major thing that we gather from all of this. All of this converges into one major tenet, the mantra. Well, it's like two mantras in one. It's like play to your strengths slash fake it till you make it. And that's everything. And I think fake it till you make it is applicable to everything in your life, but we won't get into that. Fake it till you make it is you know, you know how it is. You know what you can do. You know what you're good at. We focus on what we're good at and the rest we embellish and we hide. You know, we try and mask that we're not good at drawing bodies by saying, oh, it, we're gonna exaggerate it and we're gonna say it's a stylistic preference. If you're not drawing clothes, you're gonna block out the entire clothes as one black solid silhouette and that's a stylistic choice and intentional. I could draw, but I simply didn't because this is stylistic. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm gonna show you, ex like that's literally what I did. And that's still what I do. Have you noticed I'm not really ever doing backgrounds ever? Have you ever actually seen me draw a full body that isn't static and stiff? I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about through my artistic journey. And hopefully it will become clear to you how to draw through the eyes of a grifter, a master grifter, that is myself. Fake it till you make it, let's go. It all started in middle school, the dawn of my artistic career. Everyone who was anyone was emo. I was drawing Grr and Adventure Time screenshots. And I became quite good at that. I'd go on Google, type in Adventure Time, and then just draw something. Just the line art, because I knew how it was. I can't do color. But then something happened. I found myself under the influence of My Chemical Romance, and I said, Adventure Time is not enough. I have to draw the soft and supple skin of Gerard Way. But there was a problem. I didn't know how to draw soft and supple skin that reacts to light, you know, and is an organic matter and not a rectangle. So that was a problem. And I knew, I was like, oh my God, there's no way I'm gonna like go out here and learn how to shade a face and smudge and blend with graphite. Like that's not who I am. And I knew that, I knew that wasn't who I was. So you know what I did instead? I said, hey, I know how to work a pen. I've been drawing these little pictures of a little dog. So what can you do with a pen? that's similar to shading you could do stippling but i i don't have the patience for that or you could do cross hatching all right
uh, the first drawings I did were very much like what I was already doing, right? Just pencil, ballpoint, pen, and then I'd add color just very like clearly I don't know what I'm doing. This is just red with some yellow put in choice locations. Line art based with easy color, like just blocking really. This is interesting. This is more realistic, we can all agree. It's less line art based because it's like really quite not as much detail at all compared to the older ones. The skin color is very unrealistic, but there is an attempt to, you know, do lighting. I wouldn't say it's unsuccessful, but it is, I didn't know what I was doing, but I pulled it off all right. This is a similar case, messy sketch, messy coloring. No real attempt to capture any value, any lighting. I was obsessed with like this thing I learned where, you know, certain parts of the face have different undertones. So like the jaw is more blue, the forehead's more yellow, and then like the center of your face is more red. I just kind of ran with that. I ran with that for quite a while, and then now I can see other people doing it too, like, like, I know exactly what you guys are doing. This is where it begins, I suppose, to progress a little bit, in terms of, like, I'm cleaning stuff up, right? And the people love these drawings, I'll tell you what. I hate them, you know, in hindsight, it's very Instagram, teenage art, let's just say that. This one's beautiful. This is definitely, like, an example of me getting, like, a style. You know what I'm saying? You know, I really know what I'm, what I can, what I'm capable of, and I can create some interesting looking stuff. I like this though. I kind of want to, <laughs> I kind of want to draw like that again. Okay, look at this. So this is like a drawing of a cowboy, but there's a skin tone, like a realistic one in there. That's interesting. When I first started drawing, I was like, so I don't know how people ever figured out any skin tone, like no matter what it was, like I just could not figure out what, like how you. It was more of like a searching thing, like how do you find it in the color wheel? Oh man, I kind of can't draw anymore, huh? Yes. Okay, so I drew this picture of Joji, and then I was like, you know what? I'm kind of like doing values here. It was like an accident. I think I was just trying to get like sketchy like texture on the face, but then I was like, you know what? There's kind of color here that I know goes there. This shadow area, this over here. I was like, you know what? I'm kind of like drawing, kind of coloring a face, it's calling me crazy. And then I was like, you know what, maybe I can do that a little bit more. Maybe I'm stronger than I know. And then I drew this one and I was like, well, you know, I'm still going to rely on my crazy colors, but I'm going to put the shadows where they go. God dang it. And then I started drawing this picture. And I was like, you know, what? I'm going to come in. I'm going to, I'm going to make it realistic. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm actually doing it. And then the way I did this was I would put like a base color down and then if I saw like an area of skin that was like had a more blue undertone, I'd literally just put like bright baby blue and then lower the opacity enough that like when it blended in with the base color, it kind of looked like I knew what I was doing. If it was yellow, I'd put straight yellow. If it was green, I'd put straight green, lower the opacity to like 15%. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I did over and over and over again. It was like kind of like layers of was like washes, right? And I only did the face and the, the, you know, hands and arms, but it's pretty good, right? And I was like, oh my God, I'm like a genius. And then I did it with, I just drew a whole face doing the same exact thing. There's definitely like the values aren't dark enough, but it's okay. It, you know, it didn't really look like I was trying to. The The idea of having like a not a line art based drawing was a huge achievement in my book. And then I did this one, M&M. And I was like, you know what? I really got it good with this purple shadow. I did it with this one too. And this one, which when I was finished was this. And I really like this sort of rendering style because it really highlighted the all the different colors and skin, right? Like there's purple, blue, and this green. And the and the edges of the areas are super harsh, right? So I didn't have to worry about blending. This is my favorite labyrinth. Oh, beautiful. And I'm starting to get, you know, values more. It's just practice. It's just practice. And a lot, a lot of layers. And then I discovered this soft brush. I don't even remember what it was. But I was like, oh my god, I can kind of blend colors now. Then so I drew this more unrealistic sort of picture just so I could experiment with it. And then I made my first drawing with it, which is this one, which is honestly 
it's kind of iconic the hair is excellent i was doing the same thing where like i found red maybe it was a low i don't really remember honestly but i think it was probably lower opacity but then you can just blend out the edges really nicely so it looked way better but even still it's quite painterly then i got this other brush which is painterly it's a little rough because i was like adapting to the new program but i found this brush i think this is small chisel and it still had a kind of rough edges so it's still kind of like my other one and then i drew like this which i'm definitely understanding colors a bit more still they're quite you know not super realistic but you know stylistically it looks nice and i'm just kind of figuring out how to use the brush i guess right and then okay this is kind of a venture away then I think I got tired of my of that brush. So this is kind of like a colored pencil sort of drawing. So it was really easy to get details without having to worry how to blend really. I was able to focus on getting re more realistic colors. I think this is with the chisel brush too. And this one was actually quite hard trying to like figure out all the skin tones and working off of like a very low res picture. And I still probably definitely bent it to be not exactly like the picture. Exaggerating colors. And then I drew all these Stranger Things kids. Focusing on value, as I drew it more, I started focusing on creating a softer rendering, getting the volumes of the face right and the lighting. This is my favorite. It's too dark. I was drawing in the dark. This one's really good too, also like so dark. Like I can't see anything that's going on. This one too. This I was like, okay, like, thank God I'm done because like I am spending way too much time affecting every last thing. But the lighting is really good, right? I redid the first one. I was like, okay. 11 is hard to draw. And then I do this. I think this is also with a color pencil brush. That's good. Now that's actually like, you know, there's no exaggeration of color in this one. That's just a whole face. And then I did these. And I think the faces had like a pretty straight up reference because I, you know, I don't have a capability in my brain to draw a realistic face without reference. So that's what I did for those. And then the body was like of my own creation. And they're not too very good, but it's good enough, right? And then I found my beautiful favorite new brush, canvas brush. It's so smooth. It's like everything my young artist self wanted me to be able to do. It's so soft. This dark shadow is so good. I think this part could have been darker. I, it allows me to blend pretty easily. It has texture still. I was just putting colors down like I knew how to do it all my whole life. Studying, okay, this is what I'm learning from revisiting everything like this, is doing studies from references is so helpful because I'm not like intentionally reading a book, taking a class, right? I'm just kind of winging it. And then when you do that, you're learning as you do it, which is like, everyone already says it, like practice makes perfect. And it would be easier and you probably would learn more if you did both at the same time, both like actually taking a class or reading a book, watching a video, maybe doing a study of someone else's art, but doing studies on your own, just practicing. It makes all the difference in the world. And then you just kind of figure things out. But when I'm drawing a person, I'm not thinking like, I think it's kind of bad, frankly. But when I'm drawing from a reference, I'm not like, you know, I'm not using my brain at all. I'm thinking like, I'm like, this is a highlight. This is a rectangle. I'm going to put that rectangle here. And this shadow, I'm like, this shadow is like this big circle shape. And then within that, there's like this darker, weird, like teardrop shape. I'm not thinking like, oh yeah, this is a shadow that this thing casts on his eye. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not how I'm thinking of it. I'm painting colors, shapes of color. That's all I'm thinking about when I'm drawing. I'm like, oh, well, it's a little darker here with a little, you know what I'm saying? Shapes, look, shapes. This is my best portrait, maybe. No, the, uh, who can say, right? It definitely has more dimension. We can say that. And I'll put it, I'll put a color down that I think is dark enough. And then like when I draw more of the picture, I'm like, you know, actually that's not dark enough. I got to make it darker. But then if you're drawing, like doing a painting, oil painting, they always put the darkest colors first, right? Isn't that crazy? And they put like the blackest blacks. I'm like, there's no way that color is that dark. And then they add more and I'm like, oh my God, you were right. Everyone's got their own method. Okay, now that that's done, I'm gonna actually draw a picture for you. 
So we start out with this outline that I drew earlier and I just cover the entire thing in a solid color just as a base because all the coloring I do on top is semi-transparent so whatever color I put underneath shows through and then I just pick colors that I can guesstimate are close enough to what they're going to have to be. It really could be as rough as humanly possible. It doesn't really matter. But do your best, I guess, you know. It, it always just ends up working out in the end. I put highlight on the face. There's like a base color and a highlight. And then I start outlining just where everything goes in a pretty dark color. It just helps you work out where everything's gotta go and getting a shadow in there. It just makes it feel like you're making any progress at all. And then some yellow where there's like surprisingly very yellow yellow in her hair. And then there's her eyes are blue. I'm putting in a bluish color. And the whites of the eyes are never white. Don't ever put white pure white in the eyes because they're not white it's i put like a bluish gray and now i'm just writing down these general stages of my process starting with the pencil sketch and then i included this sketch on the left just to show you what like a more average sketch of mine would look like stage two is color blocking which is what i essentially just did was just put like really basic colors down now this is a little crazy i'm putting a purple hue over the parts of her face that in shadow because the whole area needed to be more purple and then I decide which blending mode I want and I think I ended up doing multiply and then I lower the opacity and I forgot to tell you stage three of is rendering so after I color block sketched then it's just it's endless rendering until you find that it's done enough so what rendering is is like I think of it like cleaning a drawing up you know smoothing it out and detailing I suppose you can call it it's like perfecting it but in a less intimidating way right so that's creating all the mid values and getting a more refined image I suppose oh okay now I'm like that face actually the whole thing needs to be more orange or but also I'll do, I'll do that to like homogenize colors now I got that forehead this is where the magic happens guys you need to put in ugly colors like it's gonna feel wrong but like sometimes less saturation is good like look how much better this nasty disgusting vile purple makes this drawing look something I did a lot with my older art is make it super saturated and you know maybe this is wrong but personally what is wrong right I like it uh it made it worlds better in my humblest of opinions now I'm just doing the hair I chose like three different colors there's a part that that's more yellow and then a part that's more gray and a part you know more off-white and I'm putting in the rendering process you see how it's getting better and now I'm just like carving out the shape and then I remove this chunk in the middle because although it's there in the reference I don't like it and then I added a little more details just to like you know just cuz and uh yeah that's about all I did I figured you guys get the idea you just keep going more and more and refining and refining and rendering and rendering until you feel that it's done. It's already so much better. Let me show you before and after. Before, after, before, after, before, after. It's beautiful. You did it. You drew. You drew. Well, that's about it. Um, I hope you learned anything. Started out as me wanting to teach you how to color and then me slowly realizing that I that it's not so simple. I have to explain myself beforehand as to explain why I don't really, it doesn't seem like I know what I'm doing and it's because I don't really. But I did figure it out, didn't I? And I suppose that's the moral of the story is that if you want to be able to draw, you will figure it out. You, if you keep drawing, I don't know if anything could stop you from learning and improving. I can't even say what is the best way, but I can say that any way you will learn. And this is the way that I learned. If you want to go to art school, go to art school. In fact, I went to school for art, but I just simply didn't really learn anything. Because I didn't want to, I went to art school to take fun classes and to make silly drawings about Velcro shoes. Anyways, have a great day and I'll see you around. Goodbye.